this last video, in this last video, we're going to be looking at both private solutions and government solutions to asymmetric information. So things that the private market can do without the government intervening to try and solve these issues with asymmetric information, and then how the government can intervene to rectify the market failure. So firstly, um, these are some examples of private solutions and government solutions just to get you on the right track. So signaling and screening, which we'll talk about soon, which is related to um, hiring new applicants. Independent review, so the internet just itself prevents asymmetric information because you're able to look up um, the quality of products. You can source independent reviews for things like Travago and um, the RACV has independent reviews. So you can look up more about a product and therefore you're less likely to purchase adversely. eBay, for example, has where you rate each client. And you can make comments about the quality of the product. So that stops you from buying from um, dodgy suppliers because they get a bad rating. Um, insurance companies, they get the chance to vary their excess. So, for example, for risky drivers, they can choose claims um, with higher excesses, which means that they're less likely to undertake moral hazard. So we increase the excess to 1,500, 2,000 every time you claim, which reduces the um, reduces people's desire, I suppose, or reduces their willingness to get into an accident because they have to pay a lot of money. Um, in terms of government solutions, you can remove unfair dismissal laws. So that's related to hiring people that aren't any good. So you can get rid of them quickly. But there are things like consumer laws, so they prevent mis uh, misleading and deceptive conduct. So they stop you from um, selling things at a price that are above what they should be and making sure that you have full disclosure about the quality of products. Warranties, refunds, um, we'll talk about all of these throughout the video. Um, advertisements, so that people can have more information about products as well. So we'll go through a lot of these as the video goes on. So private solutions, often the party with less information will take steps to find out more, and that can include a whole range of strategies to try and reduce the incidence of market failure. So for example, private solution to asymmetric information, when we're looking at employees, there's two key things, both signaling and screening. Signaling is about the employee providing valuable information about themselves. So they'll tell, look at, provide information about their previous experience, where they went to school, their referees, and all of that kind of stuff is designed to give you more information about the applicant. So the story I told in class the other day about um, looking up Facebook and then contacting mutual friends, that's an example of signaling to people um, to try and get the right applicants. So signaling to make sure that people provide information about themselves so you know more about them, and then screening, um, finding different ways to screen the applicant, so the employer making sure, thinking, um, finding ways to make sure they get the right applicant. So that would be checking resumes for mistakes, um, psychological tests, trial periods, hidden cameras, all that kind of stuff is trying to prevent moral hazard because you're monitoring the way that they work more consistently. So hiring them on a one month trial basis, so if you get the wrong person, you can get rid of them straight away and you're less likely to make an adverse selection or, or actually, more, actually more relevant, you're less, if you do make an adverse selection, you can rectify the situation quicker. Just briefly though, that idea of looking up Facebook is probably is more of an example of screening because the applicant hasn't actually provided that information. You're set sourcing that out yourself as the employer as opposed to signaling where they provide information about their referees. So signaling is about the employee providing more information about themselves and screening is about the employer providing, um, making sure they've made the, they picked the right candidate by um, undertaking um, trial periods and resume, uh, looking for mistakes in their resume, etc., etc. You can use private organisations, so reviews by consumer groups like Choice and RACV tell you more about products. Um, removing unfair dismissal laws, again, that tries to prevent the principal and agent problem because if you do hire someone that's not up to standard, you can get rid of them quickly. Independent reviews, so private organisations and associations may also provide useful information for potential consumers. So independent reviews like Choice and RACV. Um, can allow you to look up the quality of products, provide inspections about the pr product before you buy them. Comparison websites like iSelect, GoSwitch and Travago can get you to compare prices, compare quality and allow you to try and make the best choice in that situation so you're less likely to suffer adverse selection. Uh, reviews for restaurants, so basic things like reviews. The internet provides heaps of information so that you can make sure that your um, pricing products are being priced competitively and offers comparison in relation to price and features and reliability. And all these things prevent um, businesses from overcharging you because you know they know they're getting constantly reviewed. Insurance, for example, they protect themselves against moral hazard um, by altering the nature of their contracts. So buyers often need to provide information about their level of risk 
Um, so how many accidents have you been in, what age you are, where you store your car. If you store your car in a more risky place, they want to charge you a higher premium or a higher price because um, you're more likely to get your car damaged or stolen. So excess, the amount of the, per the, per the purchaser of insurance must pay out of pocket in the event of an insurance claim. So insurance companies also protect themselves by having high excesses. Those who choose a cheaper package with a higher excess in the event of claim signal that they're low risk drivers and those that choose a higher excess, uh, I'm sorry, choose a lower excess but a more expensive policy um, are more likely to be high risk drivers. So that's a good way to protect low risk drivers. You charge them less but charge them a higher excess in the event of payment. And then on the flip side, riskier drivers get charged more but have a smaller excess when they pay in the, with the idea being that people would like to pay the, the cheaper amount um, and then we're more likely to go with the high excess and then they're less likely to engage in moral hazard. So here's an example. Example in the principal and agent problem is when in employment contract, the workers may not have worked to their full potential because their actions are often hidden from the purchaser or the employer. It's inefficient because it reduces technical efficiency. They're not working to their productive capacity. Um, they're wasting a lot of time. Less goods and services might be made available and at higher prices. So what does the market do to try and solve this inefficiency? So we know, don't know what, exactly what they're going to do because we don't have all the information. They may not work to their potential, which hurts the company because we're less productive. How do we get around that? We signal that. So we look at their previous experience, place of education, um, we look at their referees. We screen them by doing things like interviews, aptitude tests, call, call, um, calling referees. So anything that we, just the difference between these two because it's a little bit confusing. Anything the employer seeks upon themselves, so contacting mutual friends should actually be on this list. Contacting the referees is screening. The person providing their referees is signaling. Um, setting up cameras to monitor them. Um, paying them based on their performance so that they're constantly, um, their interests are constantly aligned with the um, organization as well. So in terms of how the market has improved, there's a whole range of things to ensure that there's less, asymmet less issues with asymmetric information occurring. So again, internet allows you to review secondhand car dealers um, and find more information about the price of products and all their weaknesses. Online forums are really important because again, that they set up to try and get people to communicate about the quality of different organizations. Um, expert opinions. Um, and then the go governments can also intervene in a range of different ways. So they have, um, they force people to um, have a certain warranty for all cars that are less than 10 years old. So you have to offer a warranty for all consumers and that way if there's something wrong with the car they can claim it back and therefore this it's up to the dealer to um, essentially pay for it. Consumer laws which we'll talk about later on. Okay so government solutions to asymmetric information. Okay we're basically there's a, there's a thing called Australian Consumer Law which makes it illegal for firms to engage in contact conduct that deliberately misleads or deceives consumers. So there's a whole range of things in that, including unfair contract terms, uh, consumer rights, so the right to a warranty, um, the safety of purchased products, so if it's not up to a certain safety standard, you can claim back and you can sue them. There's rules for door-to-door -door selling. That's a really important one. So the idea is that, for example, if you're selling um, like energy, for example, electricity, you can't sell them to people that they don't believe are of um, are, ca are capable of making rational decisions. So often really, really old people, for example, um, it's illegal to sell to if you don't believe that they can make a rational decision or if someone is intellectually disabled in some way, um, you're not allowed to sell them to them because those people are more likely to suffer because of their lack of information because they're, more, they're probably easier to rip off. And in that case, we're trying to protect them. So rules against door-to-door -door selling is a really good one to try and prevent asymmetric information for people that um, are potentially less able to make rational decisions. So warranties to cover people. Um, if there's a major problem, you're entitled to a refund. Again, trying to prevent adverse selection. Um, the consumers can also choose to receive compensation if the product is below the value that it's, um, it's, it's made out to be, and that entitles them to a refund. And all these things are trying to reduce um, the problems associated with adverse selection and trying to therefore boost people's living standards. Consumer regulation and consumer law. Um, there are labelling laws, again, which gives you more information from packaged food about their ingredients. So you know exactly what you're eating. You know how much fat's in it. You know how much carbohydrates, how much protein, how much sugar, how much um, salt. All that gives you more information about the products. They have to contain nutritional information, which tells you the amount of fat, carbohydrates, etc. They also prevent those allergies, eating the wrong food. So that's a big example of adverse selection. If you've got anaphylaxis, for example, um, and you buy a product that has nuts in it, then that's a key, key example of asymmetric information causing your living standards to go down. 
Sometimes root foods are required to show the key ingredients. So for example, almond milk must state that it's only 2% almonds so that you're not buying things you think are better quality than they actually are. So fruit drinks really do that a lot where they say you know, 5% orange in, involved or 5% oranges, etc. Um, again, it's designed to give people more information about the risks of products, but also increase consumption of goods with positive externalities um, because you know exactly what you're eating. Government solutions. Um, the Australian Consumer Law that prohibits production by a corporation that deliberately misleads or deceives consumers. Um, there's been a change in consumer law that doesn't actually make any difference as to whether the business intended to mislead you about the quality of the product. If it actually does, though, if their conduct some way does um, get you to believe that the product is a better standard than you think, even if it's not intentional, you can still sue. So if the overall impression left by an advertisement or a promotion is that the quality of the product is better than you think or it misleads you, then you can, um, then you can sue because it's a breach of law. So um, I'll just skip through that. In terms of just a couple of things, you don't need to know these in detail, but in the service industries, uh, professions need to be certified. So teachers, lawyers, doctors all need to sign. Um, what we, you know, to teachers, for example, we have to have our VIT, which means that we're constantly being checked to make sure we don't have a criminal record, that all our documents are up to date, that we um, still have a, the right to work with children, for example, um, so that everyone in the profession is professional and is less likely to be um, deceiving them, which could cause problems for students. Government advertising is a really key thing to try and reduce asymmetric information. So the government will come out and provide information about the private and external benefits of products, merit goods with the intention of trying to encourage consumers to buy more of them. So again, you know, just an advertisement telling you about all the, the positive benefits of a product is an example of trying to reduce asymmetric information. Um, so examples, ads that highlight the benefits of eating fruit and vegetables, or negative campaigns from the government, um, for example, on smoking or drinking, to try and give you more information about the negative impacts of those products. Another good example um, is subsidies. So firms can subsidise things like documentaries. So you may have seen that documentary, Super Size Me. Um, that was partly funded by the government to try and encourage people to stop eating McDonald's, which is bad for our living standards and our health. So the government may subsidise firms to provide more information or give grants about the negative impacts of demerit goods with the intention to try and um, achieve a more efficient allocation of resources by stopping us from buying those products. Laws relating to warranties and defective products. So all goods come with an inherent warranty. You have to be entitled to a refund if they're not up to quality. Um, there's also a thing called lemon laws, which force manufacturers to replace persistently defective detail vehicles. All cars come with a rule that they need to be of acceptable quality and fit for purpose, or you're entitled to a refund. Contract laws. Um, so the government's trying to remove unfair dismissal laws and put people on individual contracts, so it's easy to sack people. It's another example. And then exemption clauses to prevent moral hazard. So, for example, you can't claim insurance if you were drink driving at the time would be an example of something that would um, try and reduce the incidence of moral hazard. You could do the same thing with speeding and being on your phone. Thank you.